Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we order fractions, decimals and percentages. So we're going to start off with decimals first, uh, then we're going to look at fractions and then we're going to look at a mixture of all three. So if you want to skip on to the bit that is relevant to you, that's absolutely fine obviously. Um, if you want to just watch the whole video and just pick up a few hints and tips, that would be great too. Okay, so let's get started with decimals then. Now, this should all ordinarily be uh, an easy way to pick up marks in the exam, but people always make silly mistakes. And the best way to try and avoid that is what I'm about to show you now. So you'll notice that we've got one decimal place, two decimal places, three decimal places, and a mixture of other ones as well. So what we need to do is we need to pick the biggest one. So the biggest decimal we have is three decimal places. There's two of them here. So all I'm gonna do is make all of them three decimal places. So let's start off with a 0 0.5. So all I'm going to do is keep my 0 0.5 and add two zeros so it now becomes a three decimal place number. Same thing with this one, 0 0.51. I'm just going to add a zero. Obviously the 0 0.503 is already three decimal places, so that's fine, I can leave that one. 0 0.49, I'm going to add a 0 to make it three decimal places. 0 0.509 is already three decimal places. And then the last one, 0 0.05, add a 0 to make it three decimal places. So why do we do that? Well, you can essentially now ignore the 0 point and just look at the numbers. So I've got a 50 here, 509, 490, 503, 510, and 500. So it makes it a lot easier to compare which ones are smaller and larger. Now, depending on the question, it might say order these numbers smallest to largest or largest to smallest. So obviously just make sure you start whichever end you want to. I'm gonna go from smallest to largest as that's the most common. So all I'm going to do is look across my numbers here. So 500 is the smallest so far. That's to, 500 is smaller than 510. That's still smaller. That's now the smallest one. 490 is smaller than that, which is smaller than that. And then obviously this one here is the smallest here. So the 50. Now, it doesn't matter. You can use your converted ones and put those in order. Or you can look back and put these in order. But don't do a mix. Okay. If you're going to use these, use these. If you're going to use these numbers, use those, but don't mix between the two. I'm going to go back to the originals. So this one here was the one we wanted to start with. So 0 0.05. And once you're done, cross them off so you know you don't uh, need to repeat them. We don't make a mistake and repeat them twice. Okay, so what was the next one then? We have the 490, which was the 0.49. On the original so that's now done what's next got 509 503 510 the 0 0.5 is the next biggest one there and we've got 503 yep which is the original one so that's fine cross them off 510 59 so it's that one again it's still the same three decimal places that one and then we have the 0 0.51 which was that one there quick count one two three four five six one two three four five six happy days you've got it in the right order and obviously also always double check that you've got them right as well as okay so that's the way to do it it's like the same thing here again three decimal places is the biggest one so I'm just going to quickly do this one as just another example to show you the technique so this one here is two decimal places, so I'm going to add a zero. This one's one decimal place, so I'm going to add two zeros. This one is two decimal places, I'm going to add one zero. Two decimal places, so I'm going to add another zero. And that one is already three decimal places. Like the same thing, I'm going to reorder them smallest to largest, but this time I'm going to use these ones here that I've converted. Okay, so let's have a look. 303, 310, 300, 390, 30. So this is the smallest one. Okay, again, I'm just going to cut it off there. Uh, next one then, I think it's going to be 300. Yes, it is. And then we've got 303 there, which... 
ship is the next one. And 310, 390, 333, so it must be that one there. And then it'd be this one here. And then obviously finally that leaves the 0 0.390. Okay, so definitely the best way to avoid making any mistakes. So that's if you've just got decimals. Let's have a look about fractions. Okay, so the top two here have got fractions. Now, without a calculator, what you need to do is make all of the denominators, so the bottom numbers of these fractions, the same. It's the same thing whenever you're comparing fractions to see which one's bigger or smaller or ordering them or anything like that, you must make the denominators the same. Now, the best way to do that is look at which number is the biggest. In this case, it's 12. 12 is the biggest denominator. And you go through the 12 times table, checking that all of these go in. So 12, 2 goes into it, 4 goes into it, 6 goes into it, 10 doesn't. So I go up to 24, same thing, yes, 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 no, and you keep going, going, going. And eventually you'll find that 60 is the lowest common multiple of all of those denominators. Okay, so I'm going to convert all of them to have 60... as their denominator. Okay, so just like creating an equivalent of fraction. So what do I do to two to get to 60? I times it by 30. So one times 30 is 30. What do I do to four to get to 60? I times it by 15. So times the three by 15 is the 45. What do I do to 6 to get to 60? I times it by 10, so 1 times 10 is 10. What do I do to 10 to get to 60? I times by 6, so 7 times 6, 42. What do I do to 12 to get to 60? I times by 5, so 11 times 5 is 55. And then what do I do to 5 to get to 60? I times by 12, so 3 times 12 is 36. Now because all my denominators are now the same, I can look at the numerators, so the top number, and again, see which ones are bigger and which ones are smaller. And just like the decimals, you can order the original, you can order the new fractions, but don't mix and match, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go back to the original, and it looks like the smallest one was that one there at 1 sixth. So uh, 1 sixth, cross that off, so that's now done. I've got 30, yep, that's the next one, so half was the Next biggest, and I got 45, 40, 36 to be the three fifths. Uh, then it'd be the 42, which is the seven tenths. And then the 45, which is the three quarters. And then finally the 11 twelfths. Okay, and that's how you do it without a calculator. Exactly the same thing with this one make the denominators the same. OK, um, but just before we do that, just to show you, if you do have a calculator, what might be easier and quicker is to convert these to decimals. And I'll talk about that in a bit more detail here, but if you use the fraction button and you can put 7 over 12 in there and press equals and press the SD button, it converts it to a decimal. So it just makes it look potentially a little bit easier to see which one's bigger. If you haven't got the fraction button, just remember it's 7 divided by 12 and press the SD button still gets you the decimal. So you might find it easier to convert those to decimals if you have a calculator and then put them in order. But we'll do it without a calculator because it's more fun. So again I look at the biggest uh, denominator, again it's 12 and 3 goes into 12, so does 4, so does 6, but 8 doesn't. So I go up in the 12 times table to the next number which would be 24. 3 goes into 24, 4 goes into 24, 6 goes into 24, and so does 8. So that one's quite nice. I'm going to change all of my denominators to be 24. Twelve times two gets me to twenty-four, so seven times two is fourteen. Eight times three, so five times three is fifteen. 6 times 4 gets to 24, 
So 5 times 4 is 20. Uh, 4 times 6 gets me to 24. Uh, so 3 times 6 is 18. And 3 times 8 gets me to 24. So 2 times 8 is 16. Okay. So these are all very close. So definitely worth um, putting the denominators to be the same to make this really, really uh, clear. And so which one is the smallest uh, is the first one, which is 7 twelfths. And then it was the 15, so the 5 eighths. And then we go over here, which is the 2 thirds, which is 16 over 24, so 2 thirds. Then it's the 18 over 24, which was the 3 quarters. And then finally the 20 over 24, which was the 5 sixths. Okay, so it just makes it really nice and simple to see the correct order. So let's have a look at when you've got a mixture of all three. We've got decimals, percentages, and we've got fractions. Now in these cases, it depends. It's purely up to you what you prefer to convert to. Some people prefer to prefer to convert all to decimals, some people prefer to convert all to fractions, some people prefer to convert all to percentages. Me personally, I quite like percentages. It's entirely up to you. Definitely check out my video on converting between fractions, decimals and percentages, and obviously you can come up to your own conclusion. But if, whatever you do, it's absolutely fine. But I'm going to do percentages. So 0 0.72 is just 72 because I just times it by 100. Three quarters is one of those common fractions that you should know. And that's, oh, move that over, and that's 75%. Obviously 62% stays as the percentage anyway. Three fifths you should know, but on the off chance you didn't, you can do an equivalent fraction. So I'll just come over to the side, more down here actually. So three fifths. I need to make the denominator 100. What do I do to 5 to get it over 100? I times by 20. So 3 times 20 is 60. And 60 over 100 is 60%. And then finally, 0 0.57 is just 57%. So once you convert them all to be the same, again, I've chosen percentages, but you could choose fractions or decimals. We can now put them in order. So the smallest one looks to be the 0 0.57. Then we have the 3 fifths. Uh, then we have the 62%. That's already a percentage. That's fine. Then we have the 0 0.72, and then we have the 3 quarters. Okay, uh, same thing for this one. Let's uh, give this a go. So a half, well, that's just 50%, so that's not a problem. 0 0.43 is 43%, just by times it by 100. 56% is already a percentage. Two fifths, same trick down here. That's going to give you 40% by times in both top and bottom by 20. Now, the 7 over 12 is a more interesting one. This is where it potentially gets a tad trickier because you can't get it to be over 100, nor easily anyway. Okay, so the best thing you can do there is to convert it to a decimal first. It's a bit of a pain, but very, very doable. So to do that, I'm going to do 7 divided by 12 using a bus stop. Okay, so here's my bus stop. I've got my 7, and I'm dividing it by 12, so 12 is on the outside. And then it's just a classic bus stop. 12 divided by 7 doesn't go in. How many have I got left? Well, I've still got my 7 here. Um, how many uh, 12s go into 70? That's going to give me, well, 12 times 5 is 60. So decimal point then goes in five times. What's left over? It is one. Oh, what am I doing? Is 10. So that changes to 100. Um, then how many 12s go into 100? Well, 8 times 12 is 96. So it goes in eight times. And then 96 to 100 leaves us with a remainder of 4. And then how many 12s go into 40? Uh, 
Well, 3 times 12 uh, gives me 36, which leaves me a remainder of 4, and it looks like it's going to be a reoccurring. 12 into 40 is 3, 4 left over. Yeah, it's reoccurring. So it's 0 0.58333333. So as a percentage, it would be 58.3% reoccurring, which is absolutely fine for us because all we need to do is just have a look at the size. So which one's smallest? 40%, which was the 2 fifths. Uh, let's write it down here. Uh, what do we have next? Be forty three percent, which was the zero point four three, and then we will have the fifty percent, which was one half, and then we have the fifty six percent as it stands. And then the 7 twelfths, which was the 58.3% or reoccurring 0.3, uh, which was the 7 twelfths. Okay, so a few little things to do there. I can't see that coming up in the exam where you have to mess about with that one. Um, usually these are just quite quick, easy um, one or two markers at the start of the exam. But just as a heads up, if that does come up, you now know how to do it. So hopefully that helps, guys. Thanks for watching.